Hi everyone, welcome back to Advent Nature. If you're new to the channel, I'm Tony. I'm Sheila, and this is our dog Silver. We are currently at Lee's Ferry in Northern Arizona. If you're heading to the North Rim of the Grand Canyon from Flagstaff, Lee's Ferry is definitely worth a day or two's visit. The area is just absolutely spectacular and there's lots of awesome wildlife. Our first stop was the Navajo Bridge Interpretive Center, located next to the entrance of Lee's Ferry. Consisting of two metal arched bridges, the first bridge was completed in 1928 at a cost of $390,000. At the time of its construction, the historic Navajo Bridge was the highest steel arch bridge in the world. A second bridge was built to accommodate the larger, heavier vehicles of today and was completed in 1994 at the total cost of $14.7 million. Visitors can walk across the first bridge 467 feet above the Colorado River. The purpose of our visit here, though, was to look for North America's largest land bird, the California condor. With the wingspan of nine and a half feet and weighing up to 25 pounds, this spectacular bird was reduced to only 22 birds in the 1980s. The remaining few birds were captured and integrated into an existing captive breeding program. Even though today it is still listed as critically endangered, there are now more than 500 birds either in the wild or in captivity. Each condor is tagged for identification with a unique wing tag. Number 19 can be identified as a male that was hatched on May 3rd, 2011 at the World Center for Birds of Prey in Boise, Idaho. He is currently paired with a female that was hatched on April 5th, 2015, and they successfully had their first chick on May 7th, 2022 at the Navajo Bridge site. Lee's Ferry is the only place within Glen Canyon where visitors can drive to the Colorado River in over 700 miles of canyon country. The drive into Lee's Ferry is dominated by the spectacular Vermilion Cliffs that dramatically rise a thousand feet above the canyon floor. Along the five mile long paved road, we briefly stopped to admire this large mushroom shaped boulder.
For $20 a night, a first-come, first-served campground with flush toilets is located at Lee's Ferry. Each site offers a wooden picnic table with a metal shelter and a fire pit. A dump station is located near the campground. Here, at the very start of the Grand Canyon, adventurous river runners launch their boats for trips down the Colorado River through the Grand Canyon. Most trips last about 14 days, so it is essential to have enough supplies and camping gear in such a remote area. Soon after launching the rafts, the first of many rapids give boaters a sense of what challenges they are expect as they enter one of the seven natural wonders of the world, the Grand Canyon. The normally clear waters of the Colorado River contain a lot of muddy silt during our visit due to the recent summer monsoon rains. The best birding area at Lee's Ferry is the Lonely Dell Ranch. The abundance of trees, including an orchard where you can pick your own fruit for free, can attract many birds during migration. This male Bullux Oreo was feasting on a peach. This species spends the summer in the western United States and migrates mainly to Mexico for the winter. In the past, this species and the Baltimore Oreo of the eastern United States were once considered a single species, the Northern Oreo. The western tanager is a summer visitor to the coniferous forests of the western United States. During migration, it can be found in a variety of habitats, such as these cottonwoods at the Lonely Dale Ranch. Only the breeding plumage male has a flaming orange-red head. The most numerous mammal that we found was a white-tailed antelope squirrel. During the heat of the day, it often lays flat at the entrance of its burrow under a small shade brush with its stomach against the cooler ground to cool off. This small ground squirrel inhabits desert shrubby areas with sandy or rocky soil in the southwestern United States and in the Baja Peninsula of Mexico. The chuckwalla is a large bulky lizard that measures nearly 16 inches, 40 centimeters. It inhabits arid regions of the southwestern United States and northern Mexico. Often mistaken for the desert iguana, the chuckwalla can be distinguished by its wide, flat belly and short, thick tail that tapers into a blunt tip. Although it may look threatening, this non-venomous lizard feeds on a diet of fruit, leaves, buds and flowers. The somewhat smaller desert spiny lizard is a stocky lizard with large pointed scales. It can frequently be seen doing push-ups which is a form of territorial display. As with most lizards, the tail can easily detach if caught by a predator, such as a roadrunner, but soon regenerates, such as this individual's tail. Also known as a western whiptail, we found this very long-tailed and slender tiger whiptail, 
With the tail reaching up to two times its body length, the total length of this lizard can measure 13 inches long, 33 centimeters. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our next Advent Nature. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day.